Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling is in I'm inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're pleased to announce that we've made the Zim namespace optional. So let's go into some code and see what we mean. This is the Zim fit template, the new Zim fit template. And if we scroll down here, we've got, whoa, a new frame. Let's make that a bit bigger. Plus, 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 plus. So a new frame, and normally we would say a new zim.frame, and zim is called the namespace in this case. What a namespace does is it stops our code or zim code from uh, competing with or overwriting or being overwritten um, by other code that's out there. But 95% of the time we're just using zim and that's not going to happen. So now we don't need to use that. Let's see another example. So var uh, circle, for instance, is equal to a new, oops, we would normally say, <laughs> to get used to this, a new zim circle like that. And uh, we can make it 100 comma frame dot blue, for instance. We will dot center it on the stage and dot set it to drag, semicolon. So now we don't need the namespace. We can just say var circle equals a new circle. So uh, let's see if this works, and then we will discuss further. So we'll view this in a browser. Open in browser, and there's there we have there's we have our blue circle, and we're dragging away. Woohoo! A dragon. Ooh. Okay. Now, if you are going to run into problems where you're say making an interactive ad, and there's all sorts of other things going on in the page, and you know other code, and you don't. You don't want to worry about somebody else's circle getting in the way of your circle. Then you can um, turn this back on again. So right now there's a new um, a variable up here called ZNS for Zim namespace up at the top of the templates before we call Zim. And we can just set that to true. So now we require the Zim namespace and it won't make a bunch of global variables that, that, um, that match the uh, classes of Zim, and functions of Zim. So this won't work. All right, so let's see it. <laughs> not work. <laughs> Lovely. Hey, there it is, not working. And we have 12. Reference frame is not defined. So there is no frame anymore in the global space. So we would have to go back to Zim.frame and down here, Zim.circle. And we save that and refresh. And we're back to working. Okay, but for the most part, uh, like I said, it's um, it's kind of less typing to be able to just say a new circle and a new frame and so forth. And I'll show you which other ones as well in just a sec. Uh, but we'll set that back to false, like so, and um, uh, we should be back to working. We will set that to how about a purple circle, like so, and see if we're back to good. And there we are. Let's try another one. Ran 100 comma 300, like that. So we used to have to say zim.rand, and now we can just say rand. And we refresh, and now we should see a random size purple circle each time, which we are. Cool. The only thing you have to watch out for is, uh, it's, about only, it's about the only case, really, that I think I'm going to have a problem is that I usually say var rand is equal to, and then I run my random number, zim.rand100, uh, oopsies, 100 comma 300. But uh, that actually might work, but this won't work. So if you remove that, the rand now will obscure the uh, rand global function. So our var will, and that won't work. Shall we try? So let me save that and refresh here. Uh, rand is not a function. Yeah, that breaks. So we have to then call that random and random, or it could be r and r, whatever you want there, and refresh, and we're back to working. Okay, let's take a look and see. Now, 
I don't think really you're going to run into that many problems with that at all. Because, uh, for instance, hopefully you don't make your variable called capital circle. This this would break, but you're not really supposed to um, make your variables with capital. So all the classes are fine, and pretty well most of the rest rest of the method. Or wrote, sorry, most of the rest of the functions that that uh, that we can use uh, aren't returning an object, you know, aren't returning anything, so we're not assigning it, or, you know, they're, they're unusual words anyway. So let's go take a look uh, and see where all this stuff works. So if we go into the Zim site and the docs, the global functions are fine, they're already global. But shuffle is good, rand, loop, timeout, so all of the Zim code ones, you can, um, uh, you don't need the Zim in front of anymore. Okay. All of the display objects, so container, you just say, give me a new container, give me a new bitmap, give me a new blob, give me a new triangle. You don't have to say a new Zim triangle or a Zim button or whatever it may be. So if we, if we just go in and take a look at the blob, for instance, here, we scroll down. Uh, there's a note on each of them. As of Zim 5.5, the Zim namespace is no longer required unless ZNS is set to true before running Zim. Okay, so you don't need to put zim.blob in front of there. Now, I didn't go in yet and change those examples. We'll sort of ease people in a little bit and see how it all goes. Also, there's, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of tutorials out there uh, that all have zim throughout them. <laughs> we'll just leave those two. Um, it's kind of good when you're learning to sort of recognize, oh, this is from zim, this is from zim, oh, this must be from JavaScript, etc. So, you know, and then at your leisure, you can say, oh, I actually don't really need that zim. It's really easy to take it off. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's fine. Um, uh, keep on going here. So uh, these ones, the drag and hit test and stuff like that, those ones don't need it. They're methods on objects, so the namespace is less. Now, they used to, they grew up as um, zim functions. So we used to go zim.drag circle. Uh, you can't just say drag circle. So we didn't um, we didn't make those uh, add that way. You have to say circle.drag now. Uh, okay, so there's that. The uh, alt, the sort of exception to that is animate, stop animate, and pause animate. Those ones we still use as global functions. If we're making an animation series, we, we go zim.animate, and then we can put in different targets. So you can just say animate, round brackets, and different targets, as well as um, stop zim animate, and pause zim animate. Now, one thing there, it is possible that um, you might run into problems if uh, if you're calling an animate function uh, so just beware there okay so um, down at the bottom oh there's the controls as well so controls yes you can all these controls like layout and hotspots and pages swipes and ticker for instance you can just say give me a new or sorry just say uh, ticker dot add and that's it you don't have to say zim dot ticker dot add and then down at the very bottom here frame we saw working uh, there's Zimplify. Zimplify is the function that does it, and uh, if you open up Zimplify, there's really not much to it. If we view it, that's it. So that's all it took for us to remove the Zim namespace. Um, you know, not very much there. And if you wanted to, you could, uh, you could turn the namespace on, so you require the namespace, and then you yourself can run Zimplify, and you can pass in a, an array of ones that you want to accept or to exclude. So for instance, say you were running into problems where some other library has a circle, a rectangle, and a triangle, and you want to use the, you don't want to use Zim namespaces for all the others, but you want to use a namespace for the circle, rectangle, and triangle. You would set Zenit, ZNS to, to true up above to say use the namespace. At the top of your code, above your frame, you would say Zimplify, and in the round brackets, you would say um, an array with a uh, quote circle, capital C, uh, comma, quote, rectangle, comma, quote, triangle, for instance. And what that would do is it would turn the namespace off for all of Zim except for those three things where you would then have to say Zim circle, Zim triangle, and then you won't be uh, disrupting other code. Okay, well, that's a little bit advanced. Hopefully that's uh, good for you. Isn't, isn't that neat? 
Um, the other thing that we might be doing as 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 we move along here, so in, in, uh, moving through future examples and tutorials and so forth, we'll probably st start removing that namespace, stop using Zim uh, namespace, and so uh, we'll also maybe be moving into uh, uh, JavaScript six. So that might be something like dot animate, for instance, and we'll make an animation object. We will say old oh, obj is uh, alpha colon zero. So we're going to animate from colon true from zero to whatever it's set at, which is one. And then we'll drag once we call. So we'll call a function, function like so. And in that function, we will drag the circle, circle dot, oh, dot already, I think dot drag. Does that look good? Let's try it out with a orange circle and see if that works. So in comes an orange circle. We can drag. Can we drag when it's coming in? No, we can't. We can only drag once the animation is finished. Well, uh, an ECMAScript 6 or a JavaScript 6 function, you don't need the function and then you use a fat arrow like that. So uh, we might be starting to use things like this in our examples as well. And if we refresh, we've still got the orange arrow or the orange circle coming in. Well, let's go back to pink and see if that works just to make sure. And there it is, pink, and we're dragging. Okay, can't drag, can drag. Cool. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is what's bubbling at Zim, a fairly large conceptual change where we're not needing the Zim namespace. Uh, it's going to take some getting used to, I think. And if you really do want that namespace so you don't uh, clobber other code or have your code clobbered by other things, then uh, you can easily turn that back on up top in the template. Uh, with the Z and S equals true to require the namespace. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. Have a great day. I'm going out for a walk. Beautiful.